Hello my soccer universe. Well, it was an interesting two weeks on the Iberian Peninsula. Uh, but if you want me to talk about the Super Cup, except for the fact that Barcelona beat Real Madrid in the final of that one and won a trophy that they never had any business of winning it in the first place, and that it's a totally ridiculous trophy, that's all I'm gonna say. However, it does a little bit color what we will be talking. But First, a little bit on uh, the state in Portugal, where, yes, these guys, Sporting, had a chance, maybe, to give us a title race. However, they just could not get the job done against Benfica. And despite Braga winning, and yet still no Braga shirt on here, uh, and Porto making up points, the bounce back for Benfica showed that, yeah, it is those rare occasions, those really, really rare occasions, where you need to beat Benfica in order to get back a title race, which probably is not going to happen. And Benfica are going to cruise to a very well-deserved title. Over in Spain, I think the biggest story are these guys, Real Sociedad, who continue to win, 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 and are looking rather impressive at this moment. Is it enough to make it into the Champions League? Well, we have to see about that. Uh, now that a fourth spot suddenly seems to open up, it could very well be uh, the uh, guys from the Basque country who won the derby and then could back this up as well. And they're also still in the Copa del Rey, which we'll talk, talk about. We'll have a very interesting fixture coming up tomorrow. Uh, and of course, now that we are talking about <laughs> Copa del Rey, you know, I said a little bit about the Super Cup Cup there as well. Um, after that defeat and... Uh, also, regarding previous performances, everyone thought how vulnerable is Real, Real Madrid. They don't look right. Suddenly, Barcelona, as we will see, they are still the favorites to win the league. And it just reminds me of kind of, of last season, where we also had around this time, this blip of Real Madrid, and now come the crucial moments of the season. The absolutely crucial moments, because now if they lose one, then title gone, Champions League gone, everything gone. Copa del Rey gone. <laughs> <laughs> for good measure. And it reminds me very, 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 very much of those because suddenly Real Madrid found their uh, backs against the wall and suddenly get the results. And we have seen that before. And they are slowly dealing with the crisis, moving forward, putting one foot ahead of another. And just wait and see. I have a feeling that we will get back an old Real Madrid. Will be enough to catch Barcelona. Certainly they have everything, they have to go to the camp now, so um, as to be said, it's not an easy place to go, but I don't think either of these sides, especially when what we've seen from Barcelona at the weekend, Barcelona can be stunning against great opposition, but some, some, sometimes again deep lying uh, opposition, Barcelona still have trouble, so that's one to watch. But in my review, I really want to start now in Portugal. Um, as I said, we had the big Lisbon Derby. It was actually a very convenient kick off it uh, on one side or the other. And it fell just between two slots that were of high interest to me. But uh, from just watching the highlights, it was a really, really intense Derby, as you would expect. And Sporting twice had the lead, but twice only for about 10, 10, 10 minutes. And both times, uh, Ramos. Uh, could pull it back and I think this draw although on paper it is probably an unexpected point for sporting in the larger scheme of things this is one of the few things where, uh, where Befica couldn't afford to lose they didn't lose and they can uh, move on it's just you know, a little bit of scratch here but Moving forward, they do at the same time. Porto uh, then won 4 1 against Family Gao. Braga beat Boavista 1 0. Braga also, you know, they had a little wobble, but uh, again, getting uh, the, the results and are probably now clearly um, on the pace of being number three in Portugal overall. Um, the same thing continues uh, in the weekend where at the bounce back for Benfica was rather impressive because uh, they quickly had a 2 0 lead at Santa Clara team that has the same, more or less the same crest as Benfica. Uh, after 6-6 six, six minutes, uh, Arsnes from Norway and uh, Ramos gave, gave them a 2 2 lead. They controlled the game left and right. There was a big chance for um, Santa Clara to maybe pull, pull, pull one back, but then uh, Gonzalo Guedes, after Enzo Fernandes uh, uh, sets him on, makes it 3-0. Easy win. 
Porto also win a, a local rivalry against Vitória de Guimarães 1 0 through a João Mario goal just before they have and again Braga and Sporting also getting two one wins over um, over not so easy opponents, meaning that in the table as I said it looks a little bit tighter now. This is uh, more or less the half a point, except there was one uh, game postponed, so we are one game short of uh, truly halfway. But Benfica four points ahead of Braga seems rather decisive and five ahead of Porto, meaning Porto need help for sure. Sporting seem to be in a struggle to make it in the Champions League because um, Porto they will most likely not catch and even Braga seems to be eight uh, out. So uh, look for Sporting making it into the Europa League next season, which is exactly what the expected standings tell to tell as well. Uh, I say it every week, just see how clear the top four are. Then let's say Guimaraes and Casapia maybe are the ones for the Conference League, kind of and everything, and maybe Aruka could get, get in, but then everything else is kind of in this middle fog, and then there are Spassos and Maritimo, who look to be down, and Santa Clara might get in there as well. I cannot tell you much about the upcoming games. I know that on this Thursday, Benfica have to play Passos, and then we have a rather weirdly scheduled draft from Sunday through Wednesday, um, where the outstanding fi uh, fixture, of course, is Sporting against Braga. That is a must win for sport Sporting if they want to catch Braga, whereas Benfica and Porto have uh, away games that are of, you know, no, they should win that as usual. Um, however, the uh, fixtures after are not yet quite scheduled, so I cannot really give them to them. Please check your listings if you're interested in Liga Portugal. I actually want to now go from Portugal over to Spain and we'll, we'll not starting with um, the um, La Liga, but I want to actually look first at the Copa del Rey. Uh, because we had some interesting results there. I mean, Real Sociedad only 1 0 over Mallorca. Sevilla actually uh, moving on. Valencia, big one at Sporting Region. Uh, Bilbao 1 0 over Espanol. Espanol have been actually be, uh, done quite well. Atletico get it done at Levante, but it is Struggles, uh, Betis that are out, or uh, holders, not Struggles, <laughs> holders, Betis that are actually out of the Spanish Cup already. Uh, they had twice a lead. Uh, Cavalier in the 60 second, then uh, Garcia, then Garcia uh, equalizes in stoppage time. Uh, Sabali gives them again the lead, but right after halftime, uh, Garcia, uh, Raul Garcia, uh, gives also Suna the equalizer. And in the end, they lose on a penalty shoe shooter because if you miss your final two penalties, Canales and Rodriguez, you're not gonna make it through. So uh, the holders are out, which is kind of a little, a little bit of a shocker. Barcelona on the on the other hand went to Ceuta, uh, the African continent, uh, one of those exclaves. Uh, and uh, while Ceuta, interesting, George is black and then fitting uh, into white. Well, they tried to give it their best. I mean, in the end, as soon as the goals came, the goals were gonna come fast, and it's Rafinha. Who gave them the breakthrough after Kessier assist? Kessier even scoring the third one. Lewandowski also getting one. Then Ansu Fati and uh, Lewandowski also adds the last one. So uh, the easiest task in this cup was also really easy for Bar Barcelona, which is not something one can say for Real Madrid. After losing the Super Cup Cup final, they found themselves down against uh, Villarreal, a team that they had just lost to in the league, two 0 at halftime through Capo and Chukwese. And it was fully deserved and it was everything the, the, the 2-0. However, they find this time the way back. Uh, Ceballos came out for Gross, Asensio came out and then uh, just a little bit later Ceballos is already assisting Vinicius Jr. Eda Militar in the 69th can get an equalizer and then it is Ceballos, the golden hand of um, uh, um, Angelotti. Fully pays off who gets them the winner 3 2. And this was a big release for Real Madrid because uh, if they would have lost that one, then it would really be uh, the fire would, would, would have gone. It was also very in, 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 interesting because I think it was. Um, Rodrigo, who came, came off and kind of snapped a little bit Angelotti, who gave him a real dressing down, which is not something you see very often from him. And yeah, he had to relent. And 
everything. This was this was such a to me. I, fe- I felt these little things are such crucial moments uh, that Angelotti does so brilliantly that actually could settle. Could I'm not saying it will because you know uh, repeating a season like last season is, is really hard. But this is actually something that could set Real Madrid on a rather positive way moving forward. And yeah, to make matters even better for Real Madrid, they get a real nice duel in the quarterfinal this Thursday against Atletico Madrid. Boys, this is a good one. We also have Barcelona against Real Sociedad, and I already said Real Sociedad are in a real good form. However, Barcelona at home against Real Sociedad never had any big problems. And then, um, kind of an interesting one, classic one, Valencia against the Cl- uh, Athletic Club, Osasuna against Sevilla seems to be like the forgotten one, and I wouldn't be surprised if Osasuna makes it through. But uh, Derby Madrileño, that's really, really good to start it all off. Then, uh, the weekend before, I mean, there was one fixture that really stood out, and that was, of course, the Basque Derby. And boy, it was as atmospheric as you can wish for. Yes, maybe some of the folk music ahead was a little bit hard to take, let's put it that way. But uh, the crowd was really, really into it. And as far as, as, as I know, I mean, the stadium, this is the first time that they really had a sellout for this third derby. So there was a really, really great at- atmosphere in there. And they carried uh, Real Sociedad through the entire game. And Sirloth and Kubo, two really good goals in the first half. Uh, Sunset pulling one sh- uh, shortly after back, but it was only going to be Real Sociedad. And then, uh, as soon as Alvarez got uh, sent off, there was only one way, and then as a penalty, that Oyarzabal, who had just came on for Sirloth, makes it 3 1. A really, really impressive performance, as I said great atmosphere. Other remarkable results from them is Girona beating Sevilla. Sevilla is not looking good like at all. <laughs> uh, it's really a, a, a remarkable. Es- Espanol actually getting a little, little bit of the hang of things with a 2-1 win at Getafe. So uh, interesting stuff. But with four really good teams not playing, uh, it was of course all, always been a, a round that can be all overlooked. Fortunately, there was a Basque Derby to kind of lift this round out of obscurity. Got to be said. We had a full round uh, last this past we- weekend where again Real Sociedad, Sirloth and Paravanchea get another win. Real Sociedad flying high. We had Espanyol beating Betis and uh, at this point I'm now really star- starting to worry about Betis because this is also a team that is rather uh, entertaining. Could do sounds or something good but they're hitting a kind of a little bit uh, sliding uh, point in their season. Atletico Madrid had probably one of the best performances. Within 10 minutes, they kind of disposed of Real via Valladolid with Griezmann ra- running the show, assisting the first one uh, through Morata and scoring a brilliant second one, also in- involved in the third one by Hermoso. And then it was just easy and smooth sailing. Uh, maybe getting sure finish out, you know, the rotten apple out. Maybe this could mean that uh, Atletico Madrid could also get a little bit of turn, uh, turn around, although the previous result won one against Almeria did not really help in that matter. Sevilla by the skin of the teeth. Yes, some ball is getting sent off. Then Alejo is sent off for Kakadit and it's a Rakitic penalty. In the end, in the 89th minute, that sees Sevilla get a very, very, very important point. But honestly, this will be a long struggle. We are real back on winning ways. Barcelona's 1 0 win of um, Getafe. Yeah. Five at, at the back, Barcelona cannot break it down except once uh, Pedri finds the break breakthrough. But there's not much to talk about. Same thing for Real Madrid, just a workman like win at Athletic Club. But a win they get, a brilliant goal by Benzema early on, then one by Kroos, laid on in between, just getting the points. This was all that was in there. And while uh, Bilbao is fight, putting in all the fight, the rest was kind of a little bit just not enough. Uh, for them to get the win. And so, still a two-way title race, three points separating Barcelona and Real Madrid. If Real Madrid win the Clasico in Barcelona, they definitely hold the tie, tie, tiebreaker, but it is, you know, not that easy. Real Sociedad at the moment, third best team. 
really seem like the third best team in Spain. Atletico Madrid barely hold, holding on there. But in you know, a half a point of the season, we have seen those teams falling off. Villarreal might actually actually also make the turnaround. Betis will stay in the European spots. Also, Sona still up there. And we look at the bottom. Sevilla made it out of the relegation zone, but it is so tight. Uh, I would actually argue that from Girona on, and it's also in the percentage, from Girona to Cadiz, those are all teams that could get potentially relegated. Elche are more or less down already. And in the expected final standings, it's Barcelona, thanks to the home field advantage over Real Madrid, uh, that are at the moment winning this league. A league that it seems like the two of them are toying with, but uh, not so fast, my friends. Real Sociedad set on a third place finish. Um, that will be interesting. And at the moment, who is going down? Valladolid and Cadiz. Those would be the ones which, I, at least for Valladolid, I would be I would be very sorry to see that, because not only do I really like my Valladolid jersey, but also you know Ronaldo is the president there, and that would be cool to see him there. Uh, the upcoming two weeks, the fixtures. There is the Copa del Rey. We have the make-up games in between the two uh, rounds here, uh, which are, of course, Betis against Barcelona, Real Madrid, Valencia. So this is then in, 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 in the midweek. But we also have Real Madrid against Real Sociedad. A huge, huge, huge matchup right there. And uh, that's coming up next week uh, weekend. Almost proper with the, the match of the, of, 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 the, of the weekend. We also have a Catalan derby. Girona against Barcelona. Girona have done some things, but you know, I usually by Barcelona are winning uh, these ones. And also soon Atletico, this could also be a rather, rather tight one. And then the week after, I mean, the big name against Barcelona, Sevilla. If Sevilla wouldn't be so objectively horrible. <laughs> objective uh, and then you know Real Madrid and Mallorca I wouldn't expect much uh, who is Rassos the other against we had it it seems to be a rather straightforward forward round but those are the rounds that usually give us the biggest results and yeah my scheduling is also not working out that well but maybe I'll do a video before that round uh, after the, we have kind of the mid uh, the midweek fixtures uh, after, after that round out of the way but you know let's see how all of that is going. In any case, please let, let me know what you thought about uh, the happenings uh, in Spain and in Portugal. Um, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!